Welcome back to Factorio C Block. And um, yeah, I think we need to do some quick changes. Uh, let's take a look at what, we, what I've done between the episodes. I've moved out our clarifier and green algae. Oh, you can't see because lights. Let me just move over here so you can see this a little, little bit better. So I've moved our brown algae farm over here. We're piping in that saline water from our washing farm and the clarifiers here as well. So this leads nicely into this whole setup and we can just grab basic circuit boards whenever we like. So that's got everything out of the way of this washing plant, which now lets me start adding more electrolyzers over here. But as you can see, that one's off and this one's off and this one is just crushing stone at the moment. Um, but otherwise it will be off. And that's largely because of the power draw. We're really, really running up against the power problem and we need to actually improve the ore setup as well this episode. So as you can see, there is no nothing in the buffers. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, and these are only just supplying enough carbon to get going. So we need to supply more carbon and this seems a little inefficient in space, certainly. So let's just compress them. I'm going to start building this way because we've got worms down there. Otherwise, I'd probably go horizontal. So uh, I guess we've got to look at what arrangement we can do for these algae farms. If we put them like this, um, so, you know, something like that, and it's going to be a certain distance between them. We're going to need a, um, let's see, what, what distance do we need between? Let's make some more copper pipe, shall we, just so that we can, uh, we can take, take a look at this. Uh, copper is just happens to be the, <laughs> the stuff that I have the most of at the moment, so I'll just use that for the moment. So um, here we are. So if we have, you know, something like this, let's just copy that recipe. And that's the right way around as well. So we're going to have our water coming in the middle, maybe, and the carbon dioxide going around either side. And then if we have something like this between them, then we can have a second set of algae farms. And we may have to rotate this one. Let's just do that. No, that's fine as well. Okay, so we've got that quite, quite nicely laid out. And then we will be able to craft a few inserters. Obviously, I've now got quite a lot of these basic circuit boards. So anytime we need anything needing those, it becomes quite straightforward. And then we have, I mean, we don't have bots yet to be able to deploy this automatically. So, but we do have that sort of thing. Now, I don't know what the capacity of a green of a yellow belt is with regards to these, but we'll see. We can almost space it out a little bit more to make two. Uh, if we need to, or we can do that from the start. Hmm. Yeah, let's actually just give it a little bit more space just to make sure we have enough to grow if we need to. Uh, we need one space before, so two spaces now. And uh, just copy that across, rotate it around. And then we have Two belts. Of course, we'll be able to control the offsets of these. In fact, can we even control the offsets yet? No, not just yet. Uh, let's look at the research. Is it near inserters we need for that? Near. Yes, but that needs red science. There we go. Well, single use atmosphere set. I'm going to call it red science. That will. That, that's as, as far as I'm willing to take it. And then we can just obviously put this back on here. So this is going to go upwards quite a ways i would imagine and we're going to get green algae out on it and we we'll have to wait for landfill to actually start filling this out but this does get us two to start with and then we can start trying to convert the rest of this setup okay here we are with that all rearranged so um, what i'm tempted to do in the future is have these chemical plants sort of a second row here and then you know these assembly machines on a third row and maybe a fourth row for the wood bricks. And it should just end up being like a triangle because these are going to consume the most room. Then uh, these are going to be equal and then half uh, roughly to the wood bricks. And then from the wood bricks, it's largely just furnaces. So I have turned the power back on. However, yeah, we're going to be running short because I'm at least one algae plant short. Uh, so I'm going to go and complete this. But essentially, you know, one each of these chemical plants for each algae plant. Again, one of these and then half basically for the wood bricks. So I'm just going to go and uh, complete this now. I've stretched them apart one further just to enable me to get uh, basically power poles in here. And eventually I'll be able to remove these power poles once we get to the next tier of power poles because they'll go out one further and power the plants. Otherwise, I need uh, a second row of power poles on the outside. Also, I'm merging them at the moment because we don't need uh, any more than 
than one belt. When we do, I can just run another line here and then straight up here wherever we put this in here. So, uh, onward. And as we begin to scale all of this up, you'll see now I've got up to eight algae farms and I've had to do some little tricks just to keep uh, all the belts nice and clean, i.e. none of these inserters are waiting. So on this side, you can just do this simple switch on this because of where, where I've put them, you can't really do that. So I've just got these inserters feeding onto this belt that goes onto this because they're just rotating, they're not extending at the same time, so they're nice and fast. And I've just put another, the ones I've, I've sacrificed by putting these uh, row of these belts I've moved across here and then you're just going to put on this other one so it still works just fine uh, once we get to fast inserters and near inserters where we you can choose the side we can recompact it but it, it is actually working fine however on this side then what happens is you start to put in chemical plants and um, you start to use up your resources so specifically um, carbon dioxide and mineralized water so then we're going to chase that back through so to rearrange our mineralized water setup there's now three instead of one chemical plant which is now causing shortages to the amount of crushed stone which of course never made it over to the ore so uh, we need more crushed stone again and to do that isn't terribly hard but with every machine i've put in here it's going to add even more power required to feed it all so that's the downside of all of this kind of scaling up uh, hopefully it provides more than uh, more than we're taking up by putting all this infrastructure in. But uh, yeah, as you can see, we're still not building up an excess, <laughs> even though we've doubled our inputs just yet. So we will see in a second. Let's just get this crusher in. And uh, we're going to need to put this in the same place as that one. So I guess there will do. And then we can just reattach it along with everything else. And then we've got to make sure we put this in the right place. These only seem to be able to go in one place when you when you set things up like this. So it does work fine, but uh, otherwise we are going to work. So there we go. You're getting fed with water. You're outputting that. And we just need a couple of inserters now. Um, well, we've got one inserter. <laughs> I'm going to have to get more. Uh, power poles, and I'm going to have to get more. Uh, let's just get rid of that for a second. More well, iron. There you go. Iron, sand, copper, and all the way down there, some more sand. So we can build on some more land, really. Uh, let's get that sorted, and then just another inserter. Copy the recipe across, and out it goes. Uh, we may want actually two inserters there, just to keep everything running. Because this is quite a fast process uh yeah two are enough to to keep it exiting so i'm going to then put this belt on this side switch it around so that then these two plant these two crushers can put it on the other side of the belt and maybe that i'll keep these things fed we may be able to get away with two here we'll see once uh once they all start producing whether any of it makes to our third chemical plant and then if we know we want the third, say some of it is making to the third one, um, maybe six here, maybe five should be enough to feed three of these chemical plants. Then we're not using liquefiers anymore. These are faster. And of course, that means these in turn will be faster. The main ones to look at is at the top ones, which are at the very end of the mineralized water chain. So as you can see, it's taking a little while to fill, but um, that's not too much of a problem because this is such a slow process in general. As long as it makes it up to 200 before it refreshes, then we should be fine. And they all look to be doing exactly that now. So that's eight going at full speed, which should mean that we should get some of this once that catches up. It's a bit of a long time. We should get up to eight here. I've only got seven at the moment. Those are feeding it down to two separate belts and into our factories, which isn't backing up. Neither is this. <laughs> but we may get an excess in fuel now, even by doubling everything. Hmm. <laughs> OK, why don't, we, why don't we see if we can move on a little bit, hopefully, and uh, sort of sort out what we're doing with ores. Now, we've opened up a few things with research. And one of them is the ability to use a much better recipe than the crystallizer, uh, sort of just grabbing stone like that. 
There we go. All these are nice and clean, hopefully. Yeah, none of them have any ingredients in. So the crystallizer can do a few recipes. It can do this one that we've got now, which has got a combined output. It takes two seconds. Uh, or we can just go straight to mineral sludge. Okay. And then from there, we can convert into the other ores. Specifically, we can also go into rubyite and bobmonium. Now, if you want to get towards electronics, we're going to need bobmonium. It needs it's needed for tin at least. And rubyite may even be needed for um, lead. Yeah, lead. So we are going to need these other recipes that uses crystallizers as well. So let me just put that back to here for a second. So we've then got to, uh, I think we're going to put them into a sorting machine. Now, do I have any sorting machines? Um, I guess I don't. He needs a lot of iron. <laughs> the one thing I'm actually short of at the moment, just because the power's quite slow. So what we're going to do is probably have two of these, and we can immediately split them into this and this. You know, the two ores, uh, sapphire and whatever the other one's called. Uh, I can never remember. <laughs> so we're going to split those two up. And then from there, we can put them into sorting uh, facilities. From there, we can start looking at uh, actually smelting them down. Well, more Angels and Bob style rather than this just default setup. This would mean we're probably going to need to uh, clear out the science setup, of course. I've got most of the things that just require yellow science that I actually want at the moment. So, I, you know, we don't have to worry about that too much. But we're going to have to run out of space because here is where we're going to need to. Um, well, we're going to have to move it, I think. I think we're going to try and get more land. As you can see, we're starting to separate things out into separate areas and more and more land is required. So having this set up down here, which has just got an electrolyzer feeding into crushed stone, feeding into land and nothing but land. And this is just uh, controlling all the mud. Uh, in fact, we can just grab all of you and just fill all of you with mud. There we go. I guess I should actually put a, something to feed this extras crate back in to this uh, whole thing, but uh, fine for now. OK, so I'm going to move across the probably the sulfur setup first. That'll give me some room and that's will then let me, um, I need to just store that sulfur somewhere. It's filling up this box, but it's, it's perfectly fine for the moment. But we can just pipe down the oxygen underneath here somewhere and just put our sulfur setup down there. So let me do that first. OK, so our oxygen line has been moved down now. You'll see we've got a nice little amount of space up there. I've removed the science lab for the moment because we're not just using it just at the moment until we rearrange everything. Um, the oxygen line's coming, coming down here, and we're going to get sulfur out of here. Now, at the moment, that's just overflowing so that everything else, like all the electrolyzers, continue to work. This is our main output for those. However, we can probably use this oxygen to a much, well, better use, shall we say. Uh, so um, why don't we get rid of that? That's going to stop things for a second. And get a chemical plant of some description. And let's just put that down here, and let's see what the inputs are. If we go for sulfuric... Uh, so we don't want sulfuric acid, we've got sulfur dioxide. So that needs sulfur and oxygen. So it doesn't matter where we feed that into. So I guess we could probably move that up one. Well, that's a liquefier. I don't want a liquefier. Something like that. And then sulfur dioxide. And then we can feed in the oxygen there. And we can also probably power it from there, put a insert, whoops, inserter. And that should start producing sulfur dioxide. It is. However, if there's any excess, we still want to deal with it the way we already have done. So we want that overflow valve somewhere. And we may as well put it here. No, you can't see it, um, but it is actually there. And that should work fine because that's overflow. So if it hits 80%, then it'll hit the flare stack. Otherwise, it will um, it'll stay in this pipe. So this will keep enough, <clears throat> at least for the moment. We can always move it out a little bit for sulfur dioxide. And we want uh, we want sulfuric acid, I think. Yeah, sulfuric acid. So sulfur dioxide and purified water. Purified water is again just oxygen and hydrogen. Now we have. Um, 
Where do we have a hydrogen line? Do we actually do anything with it other than flare stacking it? I think we just flare stack it, yeah. So it's the hydro the oxygen line is down to here. And coming all the way down. So we can probably come out of the bottom here and then across and uh, take that over to our uh, sort of production facility. So for that, we're going to want some pipe to grounds. Uh, let's mix uh, five of them just for now. And so if we have this here, uh, maybe we can send it through that, you know, th through here, across. So what do we what would we need from this side? Um, where is it? Sulfuric acid. So sulfur dioxide, gas and purified water. Let's put a chemical plant down. Where's the chemical plant gone? There it is. And uh, let's see where the inputs are. So sulfuric acid. Uh, okay, so it wants the top input. That's fine. Assuming that these are balanced in ratios, which is never known, but uh, we'll see that in a second. So here we are. That will feed one into the other. And you already have that filled. So now we just need some pipe just to manipulate things a little bit. There we go. And if we can go properly to here, then over this way. There we go. So we've got oxygen and oops, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not into there. Uh, I need it into another uh, machine first. We need oxygen and hydrogen, don't we? For purified water, which again is a chemical plant. So that will work, hopefully. Chemical plants. Yeah, there we go. We can craft that one. And hopefully that's going to fit into there, because if it doesn't, that might be a bit annoying. <laughs> uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fit it if not. So uh, there we are, chemical plant. Please be the output. Uh, purified water, don't we? Um, not mineralized. Purified. There we go. Oh, everything's the right way around. That method. That's so nice when that happens. So rare when it happens. <laughs> At least for me. So one there, one there. And we can feed in our inputs. Okay, so everything should be working. Yep. And we shouldn't need to flare stack uh, off except for the output. And now we're getting sulfuric acid out of here. Okay, what can we do with sulfuric acid? You're probably saying, well, we can make slag slurry with it. Some, uh, let me just actually just look up slag slurry itself rather than uh, slurry. Rather than going forward through the recipes. So we just need slag and we need sulfuric acid and we get slag slurry. That's again going to be in another chemical plant. And then that slag slurry we can take with purified water. So the same output from here we can probably feed if it's uh, if it's enough. And then we can pan up with a charcoal filter and a filter frame. So we're going to need charcoal wherever we pipe this to. So I think what we may well have to do... Well, yeah, because we're going to get sulfuric waste water back out of it, which we're then going to need to turn back into sulfur. Oh, or we can get to blue algae and carbon dioxide at some point, but we need blue algae processing, which needs red science for that. So we can't get that to that just yet, but we can turn it back into sulfur, which will start the whole chain all over again. So, mm, yeah, not so sure whether we go with that one or whether we just clarify it for now. So we're going to need somewhere to process this, and that means I'm going to need charcoal. Now, charcoal, let's look at the charcoal filter. So uh, we want the charcoal filter. Yes, yeah, so it actually needs proper charcoal. We can't use carbon. And it also takes filter frames. Filter frames can be made with just iron. And then they usually, at least in normal age and bobs, you only need to make so many of them. You don't need to have uh, a factory producing them, I don't think. Well, you have to have a factory producing them, but you, you'll get them back from the process. So once you get them back, you put them back and add more charcoal to them and around they go. So um, I'm probably going to need an offshoot of car well, charcoal from up here, assuming that we actually even ever have any excess. Because all of it's been put into this 
which is going into here. It's now building up a nice excess. So maybe, hmm, I'm not sure whether I actually want to do this, but if we wanted to put some extra there, anything that these can't take would flow onward. And then we can bring it in down here once we've got enough landfill. And uh, I guess we can, uh, that's too, be too large. Uh, we can probably just, you know, sneak some land this way. You don't have to fill in it in all at once. How much land have we got? Oh, huh. okay, fair amount. So let's get that down here. And shall we just go straight across? Yeah, we've got a nice sort of fishing pool if we wanted one. There's no fish, unfortunately. Uh, where are the fish in this mod pack? Are they in here? Hmm. Anyway, so if we pipe, uh, well, belt the uh, extra charcoal down here, then we want to put that into filters. So I'm going to set up a factory for filters. Bear with me a second. Okay, so there's a couple of options here. We've got a couple of recipes. One is slag slurry directly from slag. The other one is from crushed stone. Now, if we put things through an ore crusher from memory, let's just take a look at that recipe. Yeah, still here. One slag, two crushed stone. So if we take the five slag recipe, that's equivalent to 10 crushed stone, um, which is more efficient, at least in terms of uh, dealing with things, than actually trying to uh, deal with crushed stone to make slag slurry. So we want this one, I think. Yeah. It's the same time taken for each of them and the same amount of slag slurry we get out of it. So we can select that and our inputs are going to be... Okay. Um, do I want to move this up one? I think I want to move this up one. Yeah, let's just get this positioned a little bit nicer. Uh, there will be fine because that's not an input that's underneath. So there's no real problem there. And that's fine. And for now, let's just put a simple connector across there. We'll need to actually go something like this for the next set, but that's okay as well. Uh, we're going to want to put this factory back here. This is going to make the charcoal filters. Well, at least that's provisionally where I'm going to put it. And then, you know, maybe we have power there. All right, so all this thing needs is, uh, well, why are you not feeding sulfuric acid? Sulfuric acid is there. Sulfuric acid is there. Hmm. Interesting. Is it just the lack of um, slag? You know, let's put some of that in there. Ah, yes, it is. That's fine. It just doesn't fill any of it up until it's got some already in there. So that's fine. Uh, we're just going to need to feed slag in and we'll get slag slurry out. Fine. Uh, we've got a line of slag coming from this particular electrolyzer. And we could, if this it turns out to be a good thing to do, just reverse this line of belt all the way down here. And we should get uh, the slag coming down this way. So we can feed it in. As for feeding it out, what do we then want to do with it? Slurry. We're going to take that along with some purified water and a charcoal filter. And we're going to feed it into a filtration unit. Do I have any filtration units? I doubt I have any such thing. Uh, at least not built already. We just need iron, it looks like. I've already made some filter frames because, again, we need a limited supply of them. Uh, slurry coal filtering. Yeah, is that exactly what we're just doing? I think so. So we want the filtration unit, that's fine. Have we got any iron up there that we can grab? Um, filtration unit, let's build one of those. So that's going to feed off here and we're going to need to feed, what are we going to need to feed into it? The sump, we're going to take that up from here. And now it's built. Wow, it's quite large. So let's assume we have it here for argument's sake. There we go. So we need to feed charcoal filters into it and we're going to get filter frames back out of it. If we're going to get the filter frames back out of it, that won't be such a problem as long as we feed. Uh, if I put it here, for instance, if we're going to need one, that's fine, but we're probably going to need more than this. And I set this to charcoal filters. Uh, what we could do, I think, is just feed out of it this way. 
and pick up like that. And that will then feed them into here and we could, you know, feed them back in the other way. But I'm going to be, need to feed the charcoal from all over here. Some excess is making it past. Our power situation isn't good. I'm going to need to make more steam engines because we're not actually producing enough power. Even though they're running constantly now, we have a backlog, but uh, uh, we don't. Uh, well, I'm producing enough power, absolutely. However, we're going to be able to pull in purified water from here and slag from here. So let's just connect these again and see whether this actually works as a um, sort of temporary thing. Um, let's just disconnect you for a second. Uh, I don't want to go that way like that, otherwise we'll get stuck. That should work, however. Ah, uh, one short. One piece of pipe, please. And we're going to need a power pole or two. Oh, that's going to take a little while. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, we'll just rob one from somewhere else, is what, what I normally do. Just grab that from there and put it there. Hmm. There. Yeah, that works. So is this just needing charcoal filters in now? Looks that way. Uh, just temporarily. Let's just start it up and see if it works. Pick it up from there. And uh, <laughs> I really have a problem powering over all of this. OK, uh, let's just grab some charcoal from this belt and let's see if the whole thing starts, shall we? Charcoal. There we go. And we need filter frames as well. While wow, this is crafting, so I've got a few more things to craft. Excellent. So we're going to get uh, outputs. We're going to get... Uh, where was our outputs? Um, slurry. We're going to get mineral sludge output, and we're going to get sulfuric wastewater. We can get rid of one and then just uh, deal with the other one. So mineral sludge we can then turn directly into ores through crystallizers and we get to choose which all we want stereotite sapphirite rubyite and bobmonium which is exactly the choice that we want okay we can still do the other method of producing things just changing this recipe over but uh this is the first one i think we want to do set the setup so i'm going to go and get more land and see once i've got some power back uh, it should be pulling those and putting them back in here. Why aren't you? Is it just because all the other outputs are blocked? Probably. Let me go and sort out this to make it look a little bit nicer. And from there, we'll see what we can do about uh, getting everything up and running. OK, so we've got everything set up now. We've got charcoal coming in when it's in excess. That's been brought in with these filter frames. They're going into this and going back out of as charcoal frames. So all we need to do is make sure we link up our system. There we go. So in go the charcoal frames, along with slag slurry and purified water. And they're coming out the other side again, so they're going to get recycled. So this, again, I'm setting these up so they can go down into lines and uh, so they don't interfere with each other. So come out of here, we get mineral sludge. That goes into a crystallizer. We can control what we do it at this point do with it at this point. There are multiple recipes. We can choose any of those ores. So just to start off with, we can choose this one, of course, the regular one that we're used to dealing with. They'll get us iron, which is what I'm short of at the moment. Put that into a crusher and we get crushed sapphire and crushed stone. So we can just set up the same thing we do here just to get rid of that crushed stone. Again, this is going to be very temporary, but it uh, doesn't much matter. Uh, that will do, I think. Uh, can we get to make sand? Yes, we can. And I'll just put a box there for now. So anything excess that isn't crushed sapphirite will go into the box. Now we just need a bit more iron, which is going to take a little bit of time because things have just probably... Why have you shut off? Oh, I've deselected the recipe. Whoops. <laughs> Let's turn, let's turn that back on and uh, I just need a sorting facility. Now, sorting facility we haven't used yet in this playthrough, but in uh, regular angels and bobs, you should know what's coming. I'll put it to here, maybe. Uh, we need to keep going down, of course, and getting more room, but uh, that will just take a little bit of time to uh, get the amount of landfill. 
and the sorting facility will take in crushed sapphire and will output three things. It will output crushed stone, which we can put back through something like this. So we may want to actually put uh, the box the other side once this makes up some um, power poles. And it will also make directly iron ore and copper ore. We're sort of wasting that up here with this approach, whereby uh, we're taking crushed sapphire and we're just feeding it into a furnace. And all we're getting out of here is iron, and all we're getting out of here is copper. We will get both out of a sorting facility, and we'll get two iron and one copper for, for this. So it's worthwhile doing. Do we have enough iron for that yet? Sorting facility, we are way short, probably another 50 or 50 iron plates or so. Uh, let's just sort that out of camera. Okay, so our sorting facility is now down and outputting from that, we're, I'm going to take the slag and put that straight back into crushed stone again. Normally, I would put that slag back into this system to, to reinforce everything, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have, well, we do have filter inserters, but um, they take electronic circuits, which we haven't built an infrastructure yet for yet. And I don't want to use those five that I've got in my inventory. In fact, we probably couldn't use them because it would take two for a fast inserter and then four more for a, a filter inserter. So instead, we've got just crushed stone being made. That's going to feed back into just land. On this side of things, we are getting the, uh, the ores, lots of them and we can just fill this up it's then feeding in here and we're getting crushed uh well not the crushed ores we're getting the actual iron ores and copper ores out now this needs to be adapted because i think we need two crushes per sorting facility so i need to spread things out once we've got land available but just to get us going here instead of using regular furnaces now for iron ore and copper ore we can use metal mixing furnaces so if i just put uh, for argument's sake one here and one here and then a couple of inserters. We can choose the recipe. Uh, so let's say we want an iron in this one and copper in this one. They will both feed out of there and will start up just nicely. So we just feed these. And then we're probably going to need a box or two. Uh, are you going to give me any, any iron? Go on, iron. Three iron. Is that enough for a box? No. <laughs> I need eight iron. So I also did the sums on how efficient this is, and I'm more interested not so much in energy, because it'll probably be a huge amount more energy, of course, than, than this initial setup that we have. But for every unit of slag that we produce with these electrolyzers, which take up a lot of power, of course, um, yeah, 10 kilowatts per electrolyzer. I've got four going over here, we've got four over here, but, but just these four over here are the ones we're interested in at the moment. Uh, I want to Bring this up to six uh, once our power of power sort of okay-ish, but but not great. So yeah, for every unit of slag that comes out, what amount of sapphire do I get out? Not iron, just sapphire. And for this, if I got one unit out for this, I would get four times the amount by going through all this process. So this is a really good thing to actually have to, in order to not have to you know scale up your electrolyzers as much. So oh, those boxes are done. OK, um, let's just make the boxes. Or oh, did I already have those boxes? I think I already had them. I must just be uh, seeing things. OK, so there it will start feeding out iron. The whole rest of this is already taken care of. So the only thing I probably want to do is make a few more inserters and then have them feeding out from here, because this will probably be the slow part. Uh, this is reasonably fast. But we're probably going to again need some power down here. Let's just get another power pole. And then two from here. Because we're getting two iron, one copper. So we want double the amount of inserters. And then, of course, uh, I guess at the other side, we, we should probably do the same thing, shouldn't we? Um, um, no, it can keep up. That's fine. It can keep up. So what we'll do, what I'll do is move this out a little bit over and down, and then we'll probably want two crushes here, then a factory above it for crushed stone, and a factory below it for crushed stone, and then another set of this stuff. And then we can feed out probably um, these over here on this side, once I've got enough land, along with the crushed stone onto belts. And then we'll have, or be able to feed the iron and copper wherever we want, including back into science. Uh, now this, uh, as I said, from from slag to um, sapphire, 
four times better, but this is the only process, I think, so far that we can make bobmonium and rubyite with. We can make copper and iron with this stuff up here, but we shouldn't need to anymore. Uh, we should just be able to process everything through. So I think I can tear all this up and then send all the slag from this further down to the other setup. And then we'll get all this space back and then, you know, we'll use up some space elsewhere. For the moment, the sulfuric wastewater, on the other hand, I'm just putting into the clarifier if it's, uh, you know, more than 80% full. And maybe we'll use that again in future. Okay, so we've got a much, much better ore processing this episode. We've got lots of stuff done, lots of rearranging. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Feel free to give it a thumbs up if you have. Subscribe, share, and like as normal. And do let me know in the comments if you've got any suggestions. Otherwise, as always, guys, thanks for watching.